as people who followed your career, there were incidents um, that people knew, you know, that you sort of did become the butt of the joke or joke, joke for. Obviously, everybody knows about what happens, what happened at the finals, the the last minute situation with you and LeBron and with that that took place on on the court that became a meme. And then there's, um, you know, the whole Hennessy bottle thing and Henny JR, shirtless JR and all these things. Um, you know, for a lot of people, that was an opportunity to make fun of you. How did you, though, how did you process that? Because these are things you're experiencing that are your life, right? That, yeah. You know, you make this mistake on the court, in the finals, biggest stage. That happened to you. I mean, anybody, who cares? Like, but, but still, people use that as an opportunity to take shots at you. The shirtless thing that as well like how how were you processing those situations as everybody outside of that is getting their laugh off it's hard because i grew that's the way i grew up i grew up the butt of the joke so it's like it's easy to like it's easy it's easy like when you mean like when i hear on the internet and shit like that like because i don't really there's people i don't really know people don't know me um but it's hard every every day when I see people at night. I, I gotta put on this like facade almost when people come up to me like, "Oh, Henny guy, what up? What up? I take a picture." Like, bro, for one, I'm not the Henny guy. Da 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 da, whatever, whatever. And then like their whole energy changes, and it's like, I don't want to be an asshole, but if I'm sitting here telling you that, I told multiple people, I don't like being called Henny guy. I don't all that other like game one this and that like especially the, like the final shit it hurts me more because this is a game that i love it's a game I, i've tra- i've treated with my passion since i was three years old so when i get to everything that i've summed my career up to since i was three all into one play from and this goes from hall of famers to people who just talk about the game, people who commentate the game. Like, when you literally try to sum my career up into one play, that's the shit that hurts. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's hard for me to not want to, like, really go off. I just, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's difficult because it's, it's so, again, it's just so much love and energy and effort that went into this and like when you just get it discredited, that shit is just hard. This is, I don't know, and, what, I don't know <laughs> way to explain it. And, and, and to set the record straight for people is that, you know, the whole Hennessy innocent, it wasn't even a bottle of Hennessy, right? It was a bottle of right. champagne. It was a you bottle of champagne. You never drank out a Hennessy bottle. Never it's a once. bottle of champagne. Right? Never once. Because in fact, you don't even drink Hennessy, is that that's correct? Not right? at all, at all. I do not drink Hennessy. I am a uh, Jameson. I drink some Jameson, though. You know what I'm saying? Some Johnny Walker or something. <laughs> but I don't. But it's cool. You know, it's it's crazy because <laughs> like so many people, it's clickbait, and it's so easy to fall into it. And I try to make sure I don't fall into it. Well, I, I think. Um... You know, even though I, I think these days that people would probably define you as being pretty courageous because there's a lot of people who could have never gone back to college when you decided to go back to college and not only go back to college, but you got a 4.0 right, on top of that. Um, <laughs> One semester, I'm yeah, working I mean, back up. I, I, I struggled this last semester, man. Ooh, I said, like, you, you did it once. That means you could do it I again. That means I could do, do it again. again. I could do it again. You, sure. you could do it again. So update us on your progress. You're a sophomore now at a t correct? Yeah, sophomore at a t Well, I just finished my sophomore year. I'm going into the junior this now. So this, this semester is over for me. I'll be a junior coming in, coming to the fall. So I got two more years left to get my degree. Slow rolling it. I was trying to get, I was funny. I was trying to accelerate it and try to graduate in three years and do all this other stuff. And I was like, man, let me, let me, let me slow walk this thing. This is, this is a lot of work. There's a lot of papers. It's a lot of stuff hitting this desk. Yeah. I was going to say it, it is a lot of work. So how do you, 
balance it with everything else that you have going on. You have a podcast, you got the series out, you have children, you have four daughters. I mean, four girls. Well, for me, unfortunately, I got a tutor. So me and my tutor, we we go over our assignments and, and like handle it five days a week. I take three hours a day and really just chop it up in between what I got to do. Sometimes it's, sometimes I'm, I'm literally on trigger. Now I'm in tree for two hours. Sometimes I can be working on the paper for two hours, but I got five days a week where I literally just, just go ham for three hours and just try to break it down like that. Cause I was trying to hold like my first year, uh, Last year, I literally tried to do it like high school. Like I was at eight, eight to three. This is my block, and I'm going to like, and then I was literally getting burnt out because I went from not doing nothing to going locking in. Like I'm in the office or something, and I almost like my brain was just literally crashed with information, and I couldn't even like it started affecting my golf game, and I couldn't still didn't anyway, but. I couldn't like make the cut of the team just because I was so like I was damn near seeing uh I was taking biology lab at the time and uh this nutrition class and that was like literally had my mind going crazy. And um uh, but now I got unfortunately after this year I'm going I, all my prereqs is done so I get straight into all my majors and uh that's what I'm excited about, though. I'm 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 really excited about the next two years because I really get to pick and choose what I really want to the meat and potatoes of what I want to learn. So, uh, how did you overcome that feeling of maybe being maybe intimidated or overwhelmed? Because I I, I don't know how I would respond trying to go back to school at, at, at the age that I am. So, how were you able to kind of get over that? Um, honestly, I just I, it's the <sighs> It's as cliche as it is. I literally took it one day at a time. Like I remember the first day when I had uh, on classes first hit my um, my school email and everything. I had to do zooms and stuff with my first tutor. I got another. I had I got a new tutor since the first uh, since the episodes uh, came out. But um, it's literally one day at a time. Like I didn't know what to expect. I, I was so nervous. My, I remember my palms sweating. I got sweating my underarm. I'm on, I'm on uh, Zoom with my tutor, and I'm just like, okay. And it lasted like two, three hours, and, then, and that was it for the day. And I was just like, oh, okay, I could do this. If I got, if I do this, if I got, if I got do this tomorrow, and then I do this the, the day after that, as long as I, I, I can do this. And I literally just one day after another. And I don't think people realize it. it's not as hard as as you think it is once you throw yourself into it. Like, there's so many times, like, jumping in the pool. If you just sit there, like, you just got to throw yourself in. And for me, like, I've always figured I've come out on top better in situations where I just jump in. Because if I, if I tiptoe my way in, I'm going to find so many different ways to get out of it or not even do it, opposed to actually just following through with the process. How much did you coming up and learning in predominantly white environments influence your decision to do a HBCU as an adult? It was it was the the bulk of my uh decision. Um I knew I, I knew for sure I wanted to look, learn from people who look like me. I want people cuz I felt like for one there's nobody they're not going to sugarcoat nothing. There's never going to be a situation to where I don't feel like they're going. They're not telling me the truth or being honest with me uh, over what, so over just pure basic knowledge. That even if I could, I could look it up on my own and and really like get the the true sentiment of it. It's not just some cliche that they read out of a book that they want me to just learn and and, and can you know conform my way of thinking. Um, that Eurocentric mindset is tough, man. It's a tough thing to break. And for for me, like I knew that's one thing I did not want to have uh, going forward. And it's it's harder because once you really understand it, and you got kids, it's like shit. Like I put my my kids behind the eight ball. Now I got to deprogram y'all after like damn. You know? But it's like. <laughs> For real, it's real, it's for real, I'm, I'm, but I'm on it, we on it. <laughs> <laughs>